Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. They call me Dual X. I'm gonna take you guys through step-by-step step exactly how I made this whole van start to finish. So let's get into it. First things first, I wanna let you guys know I do not live in this van. I built it myself and then I traveled in it. First off, it was completely disgusting back here. I have no idea what this guy was using the back of this van for, but it was probably the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It actually took me like three, four days to like fully clean out the back of this thing and uh, I got it spotless, I'm telling you, but there was like mold and uh, whatever like this thing is that they put under the floor when they make these vans just like got wet or something and just turned into like the most moldy, disgusting thing in the universe. So anyway, I got all that stuff out, cleaned it out, scraped it, like hands and knees, scraped this whole thing out, and then it was just finally a bare, clean, mechanically working, shell that I could work with. And I also needed to replace the seats. First of all, they were put together with duct tape that had mold all on the inside of them. They were just horrible. So I ended up uh, just throwing those out, went to my local junkyard and I found some brand new seats. All I had to do was wipe them off, clean them with some bleach and they were good to go. So the next step was to insulate the van. I insulated it with polyisofoam board, spray foam insulation, and reflectix. The metal wall in the front of the van is also fully insulated. And that entire process took me uh, probably like two, three days. So once all of that was done, I wanted to put up sub walls in the van. So I put up quarter inch plywood walls over the insulation that I would just put in there so that I could build my furniture and stuff off of that and everything would be attached to either the ground or the walls. This was also the step when I ended up putting in my floor at Lowe's, they had like this huge sale. It's like plywood that like has like a pattern on top that makes it look like a hardwood floor. So once the floor and the walls were done, like the sub wall, uh, then I was ready to start building my furniture and stuff. So all of this wood that I used on the ceiling and this wall right here was um, is actually uh, like PVC board I think it's called so this is actually not real wood and the reason why I did that is because uh, I saw a lot of people who were building these kind of travel vans have a lot of problems with um, the size of their wood changing because of you know them going through different temperatures and different climates wood can change shape when that happens so it's like plastic wood the way that i put it in there is the way that it's going to permanently stay so the next thing that i did was i ended up building the bed it was actually originally just going to be like the classic slat slide out bed that like everybody on youtube does i ended up scrapping that whole idea for a good long portion of the rest of the build the slat bed stayed in the van until i was basically done with it and then when i was done with it then i rebuilt the bed like the bed ended up being the first thing I did and the last thing I did but the next thing I did was I fit the TV in here but I set this TV up first and then after that then I kind of like built around it so I realized that if I put the TV here then I'll also have room for a cabinet next to it and I also made it high enough so that um, when I when the bed was out it wouldn't affect me laying down the next thing I wanted to do was tackle the kitchen area so this was this one kind of needed a lot of creativity I was searching online trying to find a built-in cooktop and I also wanted to have a propane oven but there really weren't that many propane ovens online and like the only ones that were online were like super super expensive so in order to save money I ended up getting the Amp Chef outdoor oven the first thing I had to do was buy that oven uh, and then once I got that oven then I kind of built everything else around it I would suggest always getting the things that you want to have in there first and then kind of build around them because there was a few things that I had to do that I had to like remake things because I was building stuff without actually having the item that I wanted to occupy that space. So then the next thing was the uh, cabinet. I put a cabinet next to where the stove was going to be because I wanted to fill that space in with the water system and I also wanted that cabinet to fit for my sink. So I was originally going to do like a little bowl for a sink, but I just hated that idea. So <laughs> I ended up luckily on the side of the road I was driving home one day and there was an apartment complex that was redoing their entire all of their units in the apartment complex. So what I ended up doing was going to talk to the guys that were doing the renovation and they gave me a brand new full-size sink. I just had to like make a little bit of modifications to the 2x4 frame, but the entire cabinet size of the sink. I ended up just putting the sink itself inside of that piece and then the uh, oven and the stove top were going to be to the right of that. So after I put all that stuff together, the next thing to do was make the countertop. So basically what I did was I went to Lowe's and they had like this chop block wood there and I just got a regular uh, dark wood stain 
and a uh, polyurethane, oil-based polyurethane. And then I ended up doing that same wood stain technique for the rest of the horizontal surfaces in the van. Uh, right before I stained and did the polyurethane for the countertop, I actually cut it into sections. When you're making these things, you gotta try to use the space for multiple purposes so that you can fit more in there, you know what I mean? So um, what I ended up doing was instead of, I wanted to have more counter space, so I actually made the counter cover up where the sink was going to be and then I also used it to cover up where the stove was going to be. So the next thing was to make the faucet for the sink. So what I ended up doing was I kept seeing like all these van conversions of people using like foot pumps, hand pumps, and like uh, and electric water pumps that use up a lot of power. Not only was it like kind of dumb to me, but it was like overpriced. I used to work at a place where um, like they just had like a regular water jug where everybody goes out to get water, but they just had like a little faucet thing just like sitting right on top of it that when you, you know when you press the button it pulls water out through a tube so I was like why don't people just use that like those things are like 10 20 dollars on Amazon or something like that there's a standard size hole on most of the aluminum sinks you can get so what I ended up doing was just running the tube through that hole sitting the faucet on top of that and then that tube just goes directly into a uh, fresh water tank. Other end of it, you know, obviously when it pours out of the faucet, it just rolls down into the sink and I just put a uh, six gallon water tank underneath there. It seemed to me like when I was making this thing that a lot of the other people on YouTube were making this process seem very complicated uh, and expensive, but I was able to do it, do the entire thing for like less than $30 and it was took me one day to set the whole thing up like it was really really simple so believe it or not to this point I did not run any electric in the van yet and I did not install this roof vent yet so those things had came in the mail after I made up the kitchen and all this other stuff so what I ended up having to do was cut through the roof of the van I had to take off these few panels right here I had to cut through the roof of the van where I wanted to put the fan on there and that thing makes a huge difference. Same time that I installed that, I also installed my solar system. Basically, if you guys don't know already, solar itself does not run the electronics that you have. Your battery runs the electronics and the solar power is a system to charge the battery. It's kind of like your iPhone. So your iPhone has a battery in it and it runs all of your stuff that you're you know, looking at on your phone but you need to charge it up every now and then so that you can continue to use the applications and stuff that are that's on your phone. When you plug your phone into the wall, that's what the solar power does. It charges up the battery itself. I bought a 100 amp hour gel battery and I mounted that behind the, the passenger seat. And then what I did was I just connected that to a solar panel that I put on the roof to the front of the car. And then once it was connected to my battery, then I hooked it up to my Wanderer solar controller. So I wanted to make sure I had a backup of power like while I was traveling. I only have 100 watts of solar. That's not a lot for all of you who don't really understand how solar works. That's really not a lot of charging power to charge your battery. And it would have cost me significantly more money to add more solar to my roof to charge the battery faster. So I went the cheap route, smart battery isolator that I put in the front. I think it was 80 bucks. And basically what it does is I connected it to the battery at the hood of the car. When you turn your car on, the voltage from the car battery increases. When it increases, it activates the sensitive relay, and then the relay charges the battery that I have back here that runs my electronics. But the good thing about this relay is that it works in two different directions. So if my battery back here is overcharged and has enough voltage, then it'll also charge the battery in the car itself that's that's running the vehicle. So after that was set up, I set up the outlets in the back in the back space of the van. I didn't want to go with all the complicated switches and fuses and all this stuff, so I just put uh, a simple fuse at the beginning of my battery, and I ran extension cords that have um, safe fuses in them to the back of the van so that I could have uh, just basically run the electronics for my TV, PlayStation, and computer and stuff. And then the other part is just a little simple charging unit over here. So then the last big build that I did other than like regular cabinetry was this desk slash closet. I had more of this PVC board that I had left over from up here. So I had to make some like pretty precise measurements to make sure this thing when you open it up actually lands on uh, the counter over here. So all I did to make it work was I put a piano hinge on the bottom of it. On the top piece I attached uh, magnet holders. So then the last thing I had to do with this van was kind of just like 
put in cabinets. Once the big things were made, then I kind of fit cabinets around them. All right, appreciate you guys watching that all the way through. As you can see, I'm already working on the next van that I'm going to build out and sell. If you're interested in getting an in-depth version of every single thing that I did in this van, including like the schematics of each uh, little piece that I made, then you can check out my ebook. It's on my website, top link in the description. And if you want to see all the products that I used on the van, then the second link in the description is going to be uh, a list of all the products that I use. Uh, they're all on Amazon, other than the wood and stuff. So if you're interested in seeing what I do with this thing, then make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and keep watching. All right, well, that's about it. I got to get back to work and uh, see you guys in the next video. Later.